Hello, welcome to my first free digital painting tutorial. Today we are going to paint this horse and you get to paint right along with me. So why did I decide to make this free? There are several online art tutorials out there that you have to pay for. And there are lots of tools with expensive subscription prices. But like many of you, you are probably an artist on a budget or you're just a hobbyist and you don't want to spend lots of money on pricey subscriptions and thousands of dollars on tablets just to try something new. And maybe you already have an iPad. I mean, who does it nowadays? If you have an iPad Pro or even one of the brand new iPads, your iPad is already Apple Pencil compatible. So I think it's time that everybody should be able to just sit down and learn to paint for fun, for free, and even for profit. I'm here to show you how I figured it out. Like you, I started with traditional paint. I went to art college in the 90s. And back then they told us that painting on a computer was never going to happen. The very first Adobe Photoshop was out at the time. And it was advertised as a program used just for editing your photographs before you put them in your magazines. Now it has evolved into something completely new, completely different and completely wonderful. Don't let anybody tell you that painting on an iPad is not real painting. It is. It's just a new medium. It's the same as painting with watercolor, oils, pastel, colored pencils. I have used all of those physical mediums. And now that I have tried digital painting with my iPad and the Apple Pencil, I can tell you that it is no different. It feels the same. You use different techniques just like you would between watercolor and oils. And you can learn to do this too. It's not hard. It just has a few things you have to keep in mind and a few different techniques you have to use like any other art medium out there. My goal is to teach you what I learned and how to create beautiful artwork for free. The only thing you have to pay for is the iPad and the Apple Pencil. I have chosen Autodesk Sketchbook out of all these others as my favorite painting program. If you'd like to know why, I have made a little video. It was impromptu, just for fun. And I explain why I use Autodesk Sketchbook over all the others. You can check that out here. I have created a small tutorial that goes over the basics of using Autodesk Sketchbook, the palettes and the different tools and brushes at your disposal, all for free. You can access that here. So what else do you need to join my little painting party? You can use this, by the way, as a painting party. You've seen advertised those paint and wine parties at different bistros and coffee houses all over the place. Well, you can use this video for that if you would like. Have your own party at home. So all you need is an iPad that is Apple Pencil compatible. All the new ones are. I will be using an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil. You will also need these two reference photos that I have supplied for you. You can download them at my Gumroad artist page and I will share the link in the description below. There you will find the sketch that I created if you do not want to try to draw this horse on your own, but you are perfectly free to do that. You can use my sketch as a guide. You will also need the reference photo of the horse and you can save them in your iCloud or Dropbox on your iPad. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. Okay, to open your sketch into Sketchbook, 
what you need to do is make sure it's still in your iCloud or Dropbox file folder. At the bottom of the gallery, there's a plus icon. Tap that and choose New from Image. And then choose Browse and navigate to your either your Dropbox or your iCloud folder. Find the sketch of the horse. Pick that and it'll automatically load and it should have a transparent background. Now the very little, the bottom kind of half layer that you have underneath your sketch there, that's for the background. We're going to choose a nice neutral gray background so that your darks and your lights will both show up clearly. Then you're going to create a new layer and move the sketch above that new layer. Now we need to open your photo reference. That should be in your Photos app. If you have an iPad Pro, it's much easier. If your photos are in your dock or at least a recently opened app, tap the photos and drag it up to the side and it'll open and then navigate to your photo and now you have a split screen with your photo reference visible. Now we are going to at the top in sketchbook you have the selection tool icon. Tap that and choose the lasso selection. And we're just going to loosely trace around the horse. Do not worry about detail or cutting it out perfectly. We will do that later. So once you have the whole area selected, create a new layer. And you will need to pick a color. We are going to choose the color that is darkest on the horse, which would be around the nose, in the shadow areas, on the legs, and even some of those darker star-shaped patterns on his belly. Choose the paint bucket at the top and choose a dark plum purple color, just like this one here. Tap inside your selection and fill that and then create two more layers. On the next layer up, we're going to choose a new color, this cerulean, dark cerulean blue or a medium powder blue color. Fill the second layer. And then on the last layer, we're going to choose a new color this light cream color. Fill the last layer with that. Okay, now you're going to select the sketch layer, which is on the bottom underneath the purple layer, and drag it up and put it above the yellow cream layer. And then we're going to turn off that cream layer so that you can only see the blue and the purple underneath. Now the purple won't be visible, but it's still turned on. You turn the cream layer off by clicking on the little eyeball icon inside of it. Now you are going to choose one of two erasers that I like to use. The, this one will be the textured eraser and you want the settings, it doesn't matter about the size with heavy pressure, that you're going to be adjusting all the time, depending on the amount of detail you're trying to use. But the size with light pressure and the opacity with light pressure should both be about halfway, half the size of the heavy pressure. And then you wanna make sure the hardness is down and choose this texture in the texture settings. I don't remember if these are the defaults. If not, you can go find it by tapping on the picture and locating this image. Now, we are going to just start by erasing the blue so that the purple underneath shows. Adjust your size and your opacity 
as often as you need to. Get comfortable doing it. We're going to start with the darkest darks and use heavy pressure in those areas and light pressure where it's just some of it showing through that white area there, like at the top of the nose here. So we're going to continue to do this over the entire image. Don't worry how sloppy it is. Just make sure that you are as close to the dark and light tones as possible. And don't worry if you go over the lines along the outside edge of the image of the line drawing. That's perfectly fine. So you can continue to erase the entire horse this way. And I will do the same. And I will catch you on the other side. going to switch brushes we want the wash brush this one here and your settings should be very similar to the eraser brush but make sure your flow and opacity is very low and it should also have this shape to it and make the hardness uh, about halfway up 60% or so. And now we are going to use this to blend all of our messy brush strokes. Blend them in, but with a pretty light touch. You don't want to make it all one even tone. You want everything to be 
you want some of your brush strokes to actually show. So you just want to continue going over all of it, especially where there are these speckled areas on the legs. You want some of those to still show. Don't make them all one tone. So keep them, try to keep the darks and lights where they are. Don't blend them all together. We just want to soften all these shapes. You want the darks to still be dark and the medium to light tones to still be medium and light. we want to turn it on and select that layer and now the idea and the goal here is to erase out just the darker areas but there are areas here where the reflected light is shining through on the shadow and that's more of this cream color so you want to just use a very light touch to erase these areas out where it's more blue you can be a little heavier handed and Oh, of course, over the darkest areas, like around the nostril and the eyes, you want to erase it out completely. But where you have the brightest highlight is where your cream layer should be showing completely. So let's grab our textured eraser again. Settings should be about the same. And we will do the same thing we did with the cream layer that we did with the blue layer. We will just lightly erase all the areas where there isn't as much of this cream color showing. wash blending brush same settings again and just very very lightly blend out 
the shapes. We don't want to blend them all together, we just want to soften them. You can go over the entire thing just like before we want them to still hold their integrity of how bright and dark they are but we want them to be softer so that you can see all three colors together here a nice mix of all three now what we would like to do is take this cream layer Select that layer, just tap on it, and open up the Layer Options panel. And we want to bring the opacity down to about 65. So you see this cream is still there, but it's not as harsh. So now what we want to do is we have these three layers of filled in color these just blobs right now. So what you want to do is merge them together. So pick the cream layer at the top. Tap on that and open the layer options. We don't want to merge all because that will merge the entire canvas, all the, all the layers. We don't want to do that. We just want to merge the top one with the cream one with the blue one underneath. So we hit merge and now we need to merge those two merged layers with the purple one so we hit merge one more time and now you have one layer that's your whole image minus the sketch now what we need to do is pick the cashmere eraser this one here make sure it has this shape and these settings and we're going to go around the entire outside edge of your drawing cutting out that blob so you have a nice clean image of your horse we'll do that and I'll meet you on the other side Don't forget to subscribe so you can join me for part two. See you there.